Hi, this is Dr. Jeff Kalshevsky, Forensic Psychologist. First thing I want to thank people who are subscribing to the channel, passing the link along to others, uh, people are making comments, and the email questions I get. Unfortunately, I can't respond to all the questions I get. Uh, one thing I want to talk about today uh, is a result of a lot of questions I'm getting from my video, How Do You Become a Forensic Psychologist? So I want to spend some time today talking about the difference between a forensic psychologist and a correctional psychologist. So if you've watched my other videos, you know that we define forensic psychology uh, broadly and we define forensic psychology as when psychological science is applied to the uh, legal situation. So forensic psychology is an umbrella term and underneath that umbrella term there are several different areas or, or specific um, specialties. So for example, uh, under that umbrella would be um, pre-trial evaluations for competency to stand trial or pre-trial evaluations for criminal responsibility. Uh, also under that umbrella would be things like psychological autopsy, um, guardianship evaluations, disability law and accommodations, police psychology is under that umbrella. Um, fitness to f carry firearms is under that umbrella of forensic psychology. Uh, also another area under that umbrella is correctional psychology. So most um, forensic psychologists um, sort of specialize or focus on um, forensic evaluations or examinations of people in criminal, family, probate, or, or civil courts. Uh, these evaluations typically answer a question for the court. Oftentimes these questions the court want answered are based in, in legal statute. So the bulk of, of what work a forensic psychologist typically does are examinations or evaluations um, to assist in court. Now, there's one exciting um, sort of area or branch in forensic psychology um, that where there are great opportunities for people and it's called correctional psychology. So to define correctional psychology, correctional psychology is the application of psychology to correctional populations, people who are incarcerated, and also correctional institutions. Uh, uh, correctional psychology serves to um, um, assist the, a, 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 a justice system um, in being able to classify, uh, provide treatment, and help in management of incarcerated individuals. Um, so these are basically prison psychologists or jail psychologists. I know uh, this job well because for about six years I was a correctional psychologist before I moved more into forensic psychology. Now typically a correctional psychologist uh, work within the institution, so they work in the prisons and they work in the jails on a, daily, on a daily basis. A lot of forensic psychologists are in private practice, although uh, there are institution-based forensic psychologist positions. So for example, when I was with the Federal Bureau of Prisons, I was at a medical center, we had six full-time psychologists on staff. Uh, one was designated as the forensic psychologist and he focused on doing pretrial evaluations uh, for the federal courts. The other five were correctional psychologists that worked on various units. Uh, now correctional psychology really is a distinct um, specialty in psychology. There's a professional association, the American Association of Correctional Psychologists. Uh, they also have uh, one um, peer-reviewed journal that's really good. Uh, it's the Journal of Correctional Psychology and I used to use that a lot when I worked as a correctional psychologist. Uh, so what does the job of a correctional psychologist usually entail? Well, a lot of stuff. So I mentioned earlier there are sort of uh, three uh, areas or three things that a correctional, psychology, uh, a correctional psychologist does. Uh, number one is uh, assisting in classifying inmates. Number two is um, providing treatment to inmates, and number three is managing inmates. So I'm going to break those down and talk about each one and give you some examples of uh, the work I did as a correctional psychologist. Classifying inmates. Uh, so uh, my first job was working as a psychologist for the Iowa Department of Corrections at the Iowa Medical and Classification Center. I was in graduate school working on my doctorate and I had a part-time job there. So what did I do? Well, I did intake psychological evaluations for every uh, new inmate into the prison system. Um, I should define classification. So when someone comes into prison, they need to be classified. They usually go to um, a unit 
or, or even sometimes a specific prison for all the new inmates. And they get medical screenings, psychological evaluations. Um, it basically determines what security level they'll be. If there's any type of special needs or special programs that they would need, that all sort of gets figured out um, when they're in classification. Uh, and then they're sent out to, to the different prisons based on their classification. Now, when we did the intake psychological evaluations, there were a few things that we were looking for. Number one, we were looking for, is there any um, legitimate and active mental illness? Because if an inmate comes in and they have untre particularly untreated mental illness, we might want to classify them different, send them to a prison that has the mental health treatment um, services they need. Uh, sometimes um, maybe send them to a prison where there's a residential psychiatric treatment setting. The other thing we looked at in these intake psychological evaluations was potential intellectual deficit. So these, these folks would get IQ tests. Uh, and the reason we would do that is if you have an inmate who has documented intellectual disabilities, you really don't want to put them in the general population. They tend to get taken advantage of. Um, so uh, that would often, um, if we were able to establish there was a legitimate intellectual deficit because some guys would try to fake it, then that um, would help us understand uh, what prison would fit them best. And, and sometimes there was programming available for inmates with intellectual disabilities so we could put them in that program. Uh, the other uh, aspect of the job of a correctional psychologist is providing treatment. <clears throat> now this could vary based on the prison system or the prison. So I can give you one example. Uh, well, I worked on an outpatient mental health team. I covered five prisons. And any inmate who was taking psychotropic medication, I had to see. I sort of had a case load. Um, and we would do some counseling, um, some case management, and then I'd be part of a treatment team with social workers, psychiatrists, correctional staff. Um, and, and we would meet in staff cases um, to make sure that they were getting um, the level of treatment they needed. Uh, another thing is, um, you, I had a job for a, a period of time where I worked on a psychiatric residential treatment setting for inmates. These were chronically mentally ill inmates that we put in a, basically a special program or residential treatment, and I was part of the treatment team there. Uh, another um, way that I did treatment when I worked as a correctional psychologist is when I worked um, more in a general population, a, uh, I would have to provide one sex offender treatment group and one assaultive offender treatment group. And this was usually um, based on an established curriculum that we would follow and do treatment groups and then some individual work. Third one is management of inmates. This could also vary based on the prison system that you worked in or even the specific prison. Now these tasks varied uh, uh, a lot. Uh, a lot of the tasks uh, sort of involved a lot of paperwork and following particular mandates from the state or from the prison system. So for example, if uh, someone in the general population ended up in segregation uh, or what you could call solitary confinement or what they call the hole, um, it would be policy uh, at one place or one system that I worked where uh, I would have to go do a mental status examination on that inmate every three days. Uh, so I'd get a list when I'd come into work and these three people needed their mental status exam and go in and basically talk with them, see where they are mentally, fill out a form. <clears throat> Uh, another thing you might do in that, uh, um, as far as management of inmates, you might do um, pre-parole psychological evaluations. Someone's coming up for parole, they need a psychological evaluation. That would be part of your job. Uh, another thing that you would do as far as management of inmates is crisis intervention. And again, how much crisis intervention you did really depended on where you worked. Higher security, you tended to do more of that. Uh, this could vary anything from an inmate that's just sort of lost it and uh, you need to figure out whether or not they need to be shipped out to a psychiatric center. Um, another thing, uh, I can, I'll give you a good example. I worked in a supermax prison, and one of the things that we had is we had a lot of, and these, the supermax prison was the 350 worst inmates um, in the entire system that had 50,000 inmates. And they had to earn their way in there, typically for assault of behavior, um, if they've killed other inmates or staff. Uh, and they had to be managed. And these were segrega uh, segregated cells, they each had their own cell, and they were in there 23 hours a day. Again, they earned their way in there, and a lot of these guys were really dangerous. Well, one of the problems we would have is a lot of them would try to malinger or fake mental illness. 
because if they could try to convince the psychologist that they were mentally ill, they could go to a psychiatric center, and that was a much easier gig to do than um, the Supermax. And also it provided some of these guys opportunities where they could victimize inmates that were compromised due to their mental illness. So a lot of sort of malingering evaluations there. The other thing we had a problem with is um, these guys would often cut themselves. And um, they would sometimes cut themselves to try to pretend that they were mentally ill. Or they would cut themselves uh, so that they could be sent out to uh, the community hospital and then they try to escape. So management of inmates, as a correctional psychologist, uh, the, the warden and I worked together on sort of developing a cutters program uh, where we could minimize um, the, the risk to staff, um, the risk to the community by sending them out, uh, and also try to curb this cutting behavior. So we came up with a whole program. I don't need to get into all the details here, but basically you'd make a determination, was cutting due to psychiatric illness or was it due to a behavior problem? And if it was a behavior problem, uh, we would keep them there. Um, again, I won't get into the details, but some restrictions to keep staff safe, keep them safe, and then they'd get, so, they'd get their sutures, they'd get sewn up at the prison. And, and once that program came into place, our cutting went through the roof. Uh, as you can imagine, it's, it's a staff safety issue because some of these guys would have hepatitis and other blood-borne illnesses, and they would, uh, so there would be blood everywhere, and it would be hazardous to the correction staff, to say the least. Now, one great thing about working in correctional psychology, or working as a correctional psychologist, is that you can get hired um, being a generalist psychologist. You don't need a lot of further specialization beyond being a generalist psychologist. Like I've emphasized in my other videos, you need to have a license to practice psychology in order to do this job. But basically, um, you're hired because you're a generalist psychologist. You get a lot of on-the-job training because, you know, you are a generalist psychologist, but you're working with a specialized population and in a specialized setting. Now, another thing that's kind of nice about correctional psychology is you typically don't need a doctor, you don't need a PhD or a PsyD to do, to, to do this job. A lot of correctional psychologists are master's level psychologists. But again, you need to have the license to practice psychology. And I think right now there are 19 states uh, where they have master's uh, level licensure for psychologists. So if you might want to check out if there's a state you want to work in, um, do they have a master's level license? So if you're interested in uh, sort of the intersection of psychology and criminal justice, check out the field of correctional psychology. Uh, there are a lot of positives and a lot of negatives working as a correctional psychologist. But one thing that I can guarantee is it's not boring, that's for sure. Um, and also, there are a lot of opportunities out there if, um, if you're looking for a job in this area, particularly if you're a master's level psychologist. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please like, comment, pass the link along to others. Also, you can check me out on other uh, social media outlets. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and uh, TikTok. Thanks for tuning in.